Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 230 at the end of February. Oh, and it's saying the chat is disabled for this live stream. I'm gonna have to go fix the chat real quick. Uh, as always, those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, are uh, gonna get this recorded and you will not be able to participate in the chat that I'm gonna to try to fix on the fly as we keep things rolling here. Let's see the chat. There we go. How's the chat? Bob's having a good time in the chat now. All right, great. I think I got it all fixed. Everything's rolling now. Hopefully that makes things work well going forward. All right. What are we talking about today? What are we doing in this meeting? Uh, that for those people that are with us right here, and if you are, go ahead and say, say hi. Zach's already said hi. He's helping us get all the technical issues worked out and Bob too. Uh, what are we going to talk about? We're going to triage like we always do on these days. Uh, not too many things to discuss. Uh, actually all old issues, I think, at this point. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna give a quick update on the GitHub Actions cancellation problems that we're having. And then we'll take any questions and comments and things that are uh, burning in people's minds right now. So without further ado, let's go do trash. Bob, you ready? Pause for dramatic effect. Pause yes, for dramatic ready. effect. All right, here we go. All right. Uh, we'll start with the oldest and go to the newest. And Sean, I believe, has brought us back an oldie. So, Sean, what do you want to talk about? So, the problem is, is that the bundles work differently from MSI's. So, the MSI upgrade table has a list of upgrade codes, and every MSI can only have a single upgrade code. But in bundles, the bundle element has an upgrade code, but then you have any number of related bundle with type upgrade. And for bundles, the bundle element upgrade code gets lumped in with all of the related bundle type upgrade codes. Mm -hmm. So then that gets written into the registry altogether as well. So when you're running a bundle and you're trying to get it to detect related bundles, like two unrelated bundles can pick up each other even though they don't have the same upgrade code. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I guess this 5356 was closed saying that, yeah, they're all jumbled together and we can't. So it was, it was like, as with the current code, you can't fix this issue, but we have an open issue saying that this is busted and needs to be fixed. So I guess my question is, is are we going to fix the issue itself? Or is this something we can't fix and we're just going to have to let it work how it does today? Uh, which one is the one that talks? Which one do you want to look at? 4153 or? Yeah, 4153. 4153. Um, the other one is adding bundle package to bundles. If you have two unrelated bundles, A and B, and both are related to bundle C, A detects B as a related bundle and vice versa because of the above mentioned registry key. So both bundle A and B have a related bundle with type upgrade with bundle C's upgrade code. But it doesn't actually trigger an upgrade. They're just related. So then when you run bundle C and A and B are both installed on the machine, then bundle C detects A and B as upgrade bundles. And if bundle C had a higher version than A and B, it would remove, well. Yeah. Yeah, it would remove A and B. Correct. Yep, that's what it's supposed to do. But. Why? That violates the principle of least surprise. Because I can tell because I'm surprised. Because, see, bundle A and B, they have their own unique upgrade code. And bundle C does not have a related bundle type upgrade to their upgrade code. Oh, oh, sorry, I missed that part. So C does not have a related, uh, an upgrade relationship to those two bundles. 
No. Oh, okay. That's definitely not right. Sorry. I thought that C had the upgrade code for both A and B. No, C is standalone. It has no related bundles. It just has its own upgrade code. Okay. So then what's the relationship? How is C related? A and B both have a related bundle element with type upgrade with bundle C's upgrade code. That's kind of weird. That's weird. <laughs> That's really weird. Um, so A and B say they are upgrades to C. C does not say it's an upgrade to C or to A and B. <laughs> Thank wow. you. How did you, how did, how do you do this? Like, what is the reality of this situation? I guess you, all right. Uh, you could do this as like, I guess, sweet replacement. C is a, uh, I don't know. C is a point product. A and B are, are, are bottles, are, are sweets. So you, you, you want, the letters are confusing me. Um, A and B come before C, but really this is a case where you have C and then A and B are, are replacements for it. And then you release uh, a newer C than either A or B. Okay. Right? And now, now C is like, well, those guys were trying to upgrade me before. I'm newer than them. What does that say? Like, I'm... Well, what if you wanted to reset the versions? Like, let's say bundle C had two MSIs inside of it, and then you want to split it up. One bundle has one MSI, one bundle has the other one. And you want to reset the versions back to 1.0. In A and B? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know that that's going to work out well, but yeah. So then bundle C was released earlier, but has a higher version. So if someone installs the split up ones, which is the newer versions, and then for some reason runs the older one, bundle C... I don't know whether that's really reality or not, but that's yeah. The scenario. You, I, I don't think Burns not going to help you. That I mean, C is newer than those, um, so the the default behavior is going to be, oh, well, that's upgrading. That's a newer version than you. It's but going like to bundle, you. but bundle C is not supposed to be detecting bundle A and B at all. I'm I'm st sorry I'm really confused on this one. the The title says that it's you know the bundle upgrade code. The, it's the registration of all related bundles, right? So that's going. So in in the case where, um, it's all related bundles with type upgrade. Okay. But but that's not a problem. Right, that because it's in in uh, I think in this scenario, <clears throat> and to be clear, there is really a, a lack of detail here. If these are all upgrade related upgrade relationships, then A and B should correctly write C's upgrade code as part of their registration. I mean, that's not how MSI upgrade table works no no not at all not at all but 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 that but isn't that sorry isn't that the right thing to do the the downstream is more interesting what what are the effects so the the title says what it says and then it but the the you know description says a and b detect each other because they share a common upgrade code. But again, isn't that the right thing to do? It's not what MSI does. I understand. 
No, burn but, doesn't do no burn deviates from what MSI does on upgrades here. But I guess <sighs> So I, I'm a little confused. Like if you have two unrelated bundles, A and B, that are both related to bundle C, then it, forget upgrade code from it, right? They could just be detect relationships. Right? Let's just right. say it, it's simple relationship. Then that means that both A and B have the detect on that relationship. So good, right? Good one that C also has, which could be its upgrade code or any other way to detect it. They're all sharing that detect uh, detection good. Therefore, they are all going to detect each other. Like, I this bug I think is just yes, that's correct. I. I I think this is the expected behavior. I think I'm I'm trying to figure out why we didn't close it a long, 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 long time ago. Um, well, I guess I was focused on C detecting A and B, but yeah, this bug is complaining that A and B are detecting each other. But so, like, mm -hmm. if A upgrades C and B upgrades C, why does like A? So A is going to end up upgrading B then, and B is going to upgrade A. If they're all upgrade relationships, yes. Like but, they don't have to be upgrade relationships. But like this person says that they don't want to upgrade each other, and I agree with that. Like I don't. This see doesn't make sense to me. The registry bundle upgrade includes the goods of all related bundles. And and that's the correct behavior based on the fact that we today do not differentiate between a bundle declaring its own upgrade code and the related bundle of action upgrade. I'd go farther. Upgrade codes are a a detection relationship. So if you yeah. say that you want to know about this GUID, this bundle upgrade code GUID, then you are going to get a detection relationship for everybody that ends up referring to that same uh, detection. And maybe that part's surprising that you're like, hey, I just said I want to upgrade that guy, and now I'm detecting everybody that also said they want to upgrade that. But yes, that that is what it does. I'd be okay if it was just detecting, but it's uh, de it's detecting it as an upgrade relationship, so they're going to upgrade each other. But that's, yeah, but that's how, that's how related bundles work, right? You declare an action based on that code. Right. If all you want to do is detect, you author it as a detect only related bundle. Right. Which, and that goes, I, Rob, Rob's convinced me, that, that goes back to what Rob said, right? You know, your related bundles are a detection mechanism. And we threw on the action um, and sometimes imperfectly to support, you know, detection, add-on, patching, and upgrading. So here, the, of course, the, a BA can, you know, work around all of this. Right now, it's saying There's, that A and B detect these things, which is to me is correct. I, I wish we had a little more detail of what it, if the upgrade behavior was wrong. But maybe, Sean, have you right. seen like the upgrade behavior being wrong? I mean, I can tell you that if A detects B as a related bundle with type upgrade, then yeah. A will try to upgrade B. If it's a newer version, right. Yeah. And it will be detected as a downgrade if it has a lower version. Yes, that's exactly right. But so how do you, so you'd have to write a custom BA if you want them to be, if you don't want them to upgrade each other, but you want both of them to upgrade C? I think so. It's just really weird. It's surprising, going well, back to Bob's comment originally. Yeah, it's limited. Yeah, yeah and, and that's what, it, for me, that's what it boils down to. Again, like I said, we have these, we, we have these actions for related bundles, and, and they're not <laughs> documented. Um, and some of it is surprising 
it's it, it's the same thing with like the difference between add-on and patch bundles. You know, we have <laughs> we have four options. Well, actually, I'd say three. Right, detect is purely detect. We have these other three that perform actions on top of that of detection, and it's you know that's not very fine fine grained control. A BA could fix that, and you know, if I had to hazard a guess, I would say that that was kind of like a that a BA can fix it was like oh okay it's you know it's the escape hatch. We didn't design finer grained control because BAs can always, you know, work around it. Yeah, it's simpler upgrade logic than what the Win installer can give you. There's no doubt about that. And in the authoring of the upgrade table directly. And if you want to do more complicated things like the suite and single and the splitting and that kind of stuff, you may end up uh, needing to do more work in a custom BA to handle that. There's, I think all that is true. But it's, it's, it's simple in that there's a ID, you can specify your relationship across it, and that's what it, and it behaves that way over it. I will agree that the upgrade code apparently being transitive is, is surprising. So that's the one I'm still struggling with. That's the one where I'm still kind of stuck. The A and B declared an upgrade code to C. And then C releases a higher version and it will remove A and B. Well, yeah, cause it has the same, it's all in the same upgrade family. I mean, yeah, if, that's what, yeah. <laughs> if, if we're going this direction, then we should take off upgrade code from bundle element. If we're going, we've, we've, this is what burn does today. This is not new. So it, what we're talking about is changing the behavior of burn, which we certainly could do. Wix4 is a great time to do that. But this is what burn has been doing as far, I mean, as far as I know, since the beginning. Yeah, but. And the upgrade code exists because we wanted to make sure that there is always a way of detecting a bundle, even if you forgot later. Because it's possible in one installer to forget to add an upgrade code, and then you can't upgrade that MSI. It's just out there. You have to uninstall it by hand. So the goal of putting an upgrade code on a bundle was to make sure that it was always there, that you could always well, remove it by another bundle. Well, and require I mean, it, unlike MSI. And require it. Exactly. And require it. If it's not special, then I don't think we should keep it there. It's not special. I disagree. We no. should keep it there to require it. Yeah, that's it's there to require it. Requiring, no, but we we element. can require them to write write a related bundle element, which will hammer home the fact that it's not special and it's transitive. Oh, we could do that. That that's a different language design. I think the upgrade code is probably the the most straightforward case for. Um, uh, 90% scenarios? Plus. Yeah. It puts you right in the right place from the beginning. We debated requiring it in MSI, going, you really should always have an upgrade code in MSI. Do we have a warning now? A, I, I oh, haven't it's, even, yeah. yeah. It's a stern warning. It's a stern yeah. warning. <laughs> stern yeah, warning. But, but MSI, the upgrade code is special because there's only one. But for bundles, there's no difference between specifying an upgrade code on the bundle element and specifying a related bundle element. No, it, it, hmm. see that to me, that's the, the open question. The confusing part for me is that just because A and B declare on C and not each other, I find it surprising that therefore they are related to each other. Just by declaring a relationship to C. That does smell weird to me. So it, but again, it's like the, the title says one thing that is correct. And I think, well, sorry, it's accurate and it's the right thing. Um, the, the idea that A and B detect each other 
again through you know this the transitive the transitive property of related bundles uh one of those new math things <laughs> uh, that is surprising to me I don't think that that I, I I have trouble agreeing that that's the right thing. Yeah, I, that, um, that's possible. Like you could say, upgrade relationships are different because they they only target the thing that has declared its upgrade line, so it it becomes much more uh, targeted, I guess. Well, but at the same time, you know what you can do with MSI and that you can today do with Burn is, you know you can declare that you have a new bundle that's going to take over some other product. And in fact, there, there can be, it can, it can be a hostile takeover. Nothing in MSI prevents you from uninstalling some other company's MSI. Yeah. Same is true. Upgrade code. Same is true in burn. And the same is true in burn. Yeah. So, you know, the, you shouldn't have to forward declare your, your intentions. You should be able to, you know, continue doing that. Um, that's a, yeah, but so for, again, for me, it comes down to upgrades are not special. They're important and putting upgrade code in the language simply is important. But in the and burn treats all of these things as you know detection plus optional action. The answer to what they want to do here is to declare it as a detect only code and then do logic in the BA. Right. If A and B detect only the upgrade code. I mean, what they want is a detect only with automatic upgrade <laughs> without other bundles picking up themselves as that upgrade code. Okay, but that's a horrible, horrible attribute name. <laughs> um, yeah. It's what most people expect the upgrade related bundle type to do. Uh. Mm. Assuming that's not <laughs> I didn't, but okay. I, the, the pro, so, and here's why I would object to the idea of removing the upgrade code attribute and forcing it as a related bundle child is because most people have no idea what it, what any of those things do. Again, yeah, that's, that's the point. <laughs> like if we're going to make it, re, uh, if it's going to work this weird way, then... It does we work have to this way. These things. It it does work this way. So what we're talking about is saying, you know what, to in order to su to support a more narrow case, we could say that you have to explicitly call or target upgrade codes um, when you if you don't. I don't know how to say this. Um, it's essentially you take detect or detect. Uh, you'd create new logic around upgrade, or like upgrade is now a, a behaves differently, but it can be detect. I'd probably keep its detect behavior available so you can detect it. But you're saying, if I have this upgrade code and you want to upgrade it, you have to list the upgrade codes that you want to upgrade, and then and you will target them individually. And to Sean's point, then that does not mean that you participate in the detection of that identity anymore, right? You you say I upgrade that thing, but you can't detect me via that upgrade code. Now, the downside of that is that if uh, you try to install C later, now I guess I'll have to know that A is still there pointing at it. Yeah, so it's a, it's a much more uh, directed graph instead of a once you get into it everybody points at everybody which is the way it works today it's a much more this only points one direction i only upgrade in one direction and we could argue we could certainly make that change if we wanted to go through and think through all the different behaviors i think that aligns better with what your expectations were sean 
that it's much more directed on the upgrade line and you don't participate in the global detect um, behaviors of all of the detections. Right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that if that's the right thing to do for upgrades, it's hard to argue that it isn't also the right thing to do for add-ons and patches. Let's see, add-ons and patches. Well, someone would have to document what those things actually do for me to understand what you guys are about to say about it. Oh, it's all just guessing. Without the code in front of us, it's all just guessing. But it, but it's the same thing, right? If these things are are, if these relationships go through this very amorphous graph, then then there are you can certainly get into a, a a situation where you have you know unintended consequences, and and directing them uh, is one way of solving that. Another way of solving that is to limit the amount of traversal that goes on. Again, I, for me, the my my question, my open question is: Should should oh god, I had it. Um, the the mutual detection of bundle C, I would think, should not trigger a relationship between A and B. It's it's the love triangle of bundles. <laughs> and A and B don't have... Oh, now I want to talk about polyamorous bundles. A and B <laughs> don't necessarily have a direct relationship just because they target C. And that's where I'm... In my head, I'm like, ah, but it's all just detection. All right, all right. So this is this is the change I think that I'm hearing is that today there's no direction between the relationships. It's just a statement of, hey, I participate in this relationship, and then that's it. Like, and now everything will be will be able to detect you, and then potentially have its operations. Like, if you declare upgrade, that means that your version now can cause behaviors on top of that. And what I'm hearing is that it's like, no, 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 what we really want is to make it directed as opposed to bi-directional in all directions, in, in all ways. It's not even bi-directional. It's all, it's just an open, it's not even a graph. It's just, you declare, now you're part of this identity and everything will operate on you within that space. And instead, it's like, you want to declare these points and then direct change to those different places, to those diff uh, different identities which is certainly possible it'll get it'll be it'll be more complicated than what it is today but you'll certainly be able to get much more control over um, the behaviors between two things between two ends thus that you'd be able to say a and b upgrade c but that does not now mean that a and b are the same that they can find each other because they just say I upgrade that over there I don't necessarily participate in upgrade C's in C's upgrade code certainly I mean certainly could do that the detection probably goes should A and B be detectable from that upgrade code though no. yes so that C can find them no C, yeah because C, C has to know that them. it can't install Well, that is a fine goal, but it's not something that even MSI does today. But it is something that Burn does today. I don't think it should continue doing that. <laughs> well, that'll so, be you, that'll be a are, big change. I'm I'm not sure. Is that true? That that a newer version of the same upgrade code doesn't automatically no, mark you to be downgraded. Not what we're saying. No. It's, it's, C won't detect A because A has its own upgrade code. It doesn't have C's upgrade code as the upgrade code. Right. So, but but A is newer than C. It should block C, right? Like that was the goal. A no. upgraded C, therefore C should not be put back on the. You shouldn't say, I'm going to. I I had my product. Uh, C, it gets acquired. This is always kind of, I think, the scenario. It gets acquired by another company. Company releases comp uh, product A that now wants to remove C and, you know, absorb C. 
So you have someone has C on machine, they get the newer version, they get A, A removes C, A is on the machine, everybody's good. You don't want the customer to add, accidentally come back and say, here, let me put C back on the machine and have it go, okay, I'll try. Because C was upgraded. Yep. That's not the logic you want. And you can't change C because you didn't know that A was going to come along later in the future. C has to know based off of right now it's upgrade code. There's a newer thing that upgraded me, therefore I can't, I should not be installing. Well, maybe I'm projecting, but I don't think that's what they wanted here. I think they wanted unrelated bundles. A and B are completely unrelated, but can... they still want it to upgrade C. Right. And, and, my guess is that they don't want C to install again with a lower version than A or B on the machine. Well, I don't see how they would get that requirement if they want them to be unrelated. If A's are in the machine, C should not be allowed to get installed in the machine. Yeah, but by I don't think there's any way for us to implement it built-in functionality so that A and B are completely unrelated. This is yeah. I've, I'm I'm worried about putting that kind of logic in the engine. Which logic? The C blocking A, or sorry, no, no, presence of A or B blocking C. I don't think that belongs in the engine. That's but that's business logic. This is the normal sort of scenario you go through. Like this is much more common than even having a B in this mix. But how do you do that with MSI? Like, you can't, right? No. I don't know how, yeah, it's much harder to do with MSI. You'd have to use the same upgrade code. Yeah, it's terrible. So, so there's this hidden feature that you've now... It's not hidden. It's, it burn does this every single time with every bundle. If you get a newer version of a bundle with the same upgrade code, the second one by default will be in marked as downgrade. That's what it does right now during detection, right out of the gate. But that's with identical upgrade codes. Yeah, with any upgrade codes. I think it's any upgrade codes. I mean, I could be wrong about that, but I thought it was any upgrade codes. Any, I mean, yeah, and identical upgrade codes. Anybody that has your upgrade code that's newer than you prevents you from installing yeah and you think there's a ton of people using this functionality yeah i think every bundle expects that today i release version one i release version two i release version three all of them yeah that functionality makes sense but having dual upgrade codes and carrying that on forever so that you can never up install an old bundle c no matter how long bundle a has been around no you right. could install a newer c you just can't install an older you can't install a c older than a see that's just weird but that's the exact scenario where this happens where product c is um deprecated in ver in favor of product a and then you roll forward with that That's a, it's a very concrete thing that happened a number of times when we were back in 2008. Like there's just enough people that are like, yeah, that happened to us. It changed. So we want to prevent the old one and we're into the new one and go forward. That was, that was it. Now you, you could still do that in the directed world. A says it's, it upgrades C, older versions of C you can't install. It's fine. No. no. How, no how, how is that directed? A says it's a newer version of C. But you're installing C sub 2, C prime. If you, if you want older C to detect A, then there's nothing that's going to stop bundle B from also detecting A. And to be no, fair, but, you, this... I, but A would have a different upgrade code than C. Um, C. Like the older C is going to detect the directed upgrade co code C, just like, and bundle B would also have to detect the up directed upgrade bundle C. Like, 
I don't see how those don't happen. I don't know how you implement it to where bundle old bundle C would detect A, but B would not detect A. Well, if all of them had separate upgrade codes and A has an explicit line that says, I upgrade C's upgrade code, and B has a line that says, I upgrade C's upgrade code, there's no direct line between B and A. They just both point at C. And then C is supposed to go out and find that direction from A and B? When C comes along, it has to know if someone's pointing at it and say there's a newer version. Something upgraded me. I shouldn't be able to turn around and install C again. I don't just... entirely disagree because this is how add-ons work as well and mm. patches for, for what it's worth. Yeah. Patches declare their relationship to a base bundle and that base bundle knows about the patch bundle. So what you're saying here is not out of, it's not as crazy as it sounds um, because this is explicitly how add-ons and patches work. Um, and maybe now I'm going back to the idea that upgrades ought to be more special. I don't, I don't disagree with your scenario, Rob. I'm concerned that it's, it, we're, we're, we'd be complicating the engine for some of these scenarios. Now, that said, I'm going deeper onto my own stack. Um, perhaps what needs to happen is we really need to, like, document all this stuff so that we can you know put it up on a whiteboard I put it up on my actual whiteboard just so I can remember how add-ons the patches are supposed to work um, yeah they're they're the same they just don't participate in the yeah I mean they're not yeah they're, add-on and patches don't use the upgrade code is that true uh, no they can the upgrade. Find but generally, yes. they, they upgrade their own. They, no, they don't upgrade the base bundle. No, they don't. They don't, they don't have the same upgrade code. They, they, they're no. not finding the base by the basis upgrade code. They certainly right. could. Um, yeah, they do, actually. They can. They don't have to. I thought they did have to. No, nope. could be any, any, any related bundle ID. The upgrade code is one of them, is available. Uh, so you go related bundle action equals patch. The ID you give it can be anything? Yeah. It's just a yeah. related bundle ID. Definitely need to document this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Because uh, I, I, at one point, had quite a bit of expertise in bundle and bundles and patching and what Rob said just is shocking to me not like jaw droppingly shocking <laughs> I was going to say it's, it's, it's just a related bundle is just a way of saying hey I have this ID hanging out here that you can then create relationships to and anybody that knows that ID can participate around that identifier and hang themselves up if it could just be detection hey I detect that thing. Now you get a notification if anybody else inside your circle of uh, uh, related bundle is on the machine. You're like, okay, hey, great, thanks. It told me that this thing was already on the machine, for example. Right, but I expect... <sighs> and the upgrade bundle... code is one of those related bundle IDs. Okay, related bundle... Right, but how else do you identify a bundle? Given that the bundle ID is, is right. silently generated... Right. in a way that isn't reflected right. short of right. expect, we, we chose expecting to, the manifest. Exactly. We chose to hide the bundle ID through everything due to the some of the weirdnesses that get around with the product code and yeah. the yeah. package code and MSI. So we're just, like, we're just going to hide this whole thing. So if you want an identifiable ID, one, you have to have one, the upgrade code, so that you can upgrade right. yourself in the future. That's one. And the way to declare others, if you want more than one, is to have to declare a related bundle. 
So for okay. example, you could say, I am a, th a platform that I want other bundles to add on to. I'm going to create this backwards compatible concept of platform in my application. I'm going to get a related bundle. And now anybody can create an add-on to that. And you have to publish that ID to other people and say, if you want to become an add-on to our platform, you have to be a related bundle add-on to this. And it will just work. Okay. It will then find you. To give that ID to a bundle, you have to use the related bundle element. Yep. And an action of detect. If you just is, want to detect it. Hold, no, hold on. Oh, sorry. You're giving, you have to give your platform an ID. Yes. How do you do that? Oh, what the, is the offer? Related bundle? Oh, the initial declaration? Bundle. Yeah. Yeah, is detect. Yeah, it's, it's essentially... Okay. Tell me about other people. So that's are. yes. That's the neutral that, one. That is, well, it's not neutral. Yeah, it's that the, is that is the most neutral one. I'll give you that. Because there is, is no neutral. none today. It is. It is. The, it is. I will agree. The most neutral. Right. Because there isn't an associated action except there is. It's called detect. Right. So that that authoring both creates the ident the identification the ID for that platform concept and tries to detect it correct this is this is i think the root of this bug right you're you're you need to declare an identity you also have to detect that identity and we have one concept that covers both i see would you rather there's a way of saying related bundle action is none or leave action off uh i don't know that that I mean, no, I mean, okay. that doesn't. That, sorry, it doesn't matter because because what you're saying is by declaring that um, the registration is going to include that code in the bundle detect codes, and therefore there's no way to dis to distinguish. <sighs> sorry, let me back up. The platform bundle declares ID GUID one action equals detect. How is that bundle differentiated from any other bundle that wants to detect the platform or be an add on to it? I don't think it can which is the root of, I think, the root of this bug, is that they want it to be more directed. Right, right. And, and, I, and I get that. I that makes sense to me. That's, well. I, that makes sense to me, that you'd want to be much more directed. It kind of is when you say related bundle add-on, you're, you're basically saying you're detect, you are, you know, you're pointing at something else. Yeah, yeah. Um, patch is the same way. Um, yep. Upgrade is the same way. The problem is then you're also, you're saying you upgrade anybody that has that related bundle ID. And that's the part where I'm like, yeah, okay. So the ability to be a little bit more scoped um, on this makes sense. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, we can look at MSI and go, oh, look, they have a whole bunch of things you can target in addition to just upgrade code and version. Um, Published component. You know, version ranges. Well, um, well I was, no, I think version ranges, language, all that. Right, um, right. And and absolutely simplified bundles. And you could argue too much, but it was definitely a simplification that there's no version ranges on the upgrade relationship. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yes. I'm not suggesting we add it because, oh my God, that's such a huge pain. Um, but I, I get uh, my confusion and... And I guess where I'm leaning toward, if I were to redesign it, I would design it differently. If you could only target the upgrade code uh, from from an add-on bundle or a patch bundle, then you're targeting a known ID that that can't otherwise. You know, that shouldn't change, right? It, yeah. In all the way an upgrade code identifies a, a family. Yep. It's a good target. But that, um, that, 
That's also well, why it's not the thing necessarily to publish as your, in the case of a platform, as the identifier for your platform. Right. Because right. you may want to break your platform compatibility, but you don't want to break your upgrade relationship. So you don't want to publish your upgrade uh, code as the related bundle ID. So you go and create a different one. I mean, to be fair, and this is not a huge positive, but it borrows a little bit from contracts and com, right? The contract and com says, here's a GUID. This is my contract. I exist. So related bundles are kind of like that. It's not necessarily a contract, but it's like, here, I exist. If you want to get a completely new um, contract, you create a new GUID. And of course, if you have upgrade relationship based on that contract, well, you've broken that relationship. That's why using the upgrade code as the related bundle for not upgrade things, I would recommend it. That's why you could create another one. Yeah. And now I'm wanting to have a discussion about prog IDs versus class IDs. And that's just really horrible and boring. Um, my, my, my overall point at the moment is that it seems that adding any one of these related bundle IDs, any, sorry, any type of related bundle ID invites you into this really big world of related bundles. Um, and without finer grained control over the actions, there will be unintended consequences. And the answer I think today is for the immediate future. That's what BA logic is, is for. Right, because you can control all of these. Yeah, you could override whatever Burn says the default is. And I think it's a little, I think it's surprising that um, you are opting. <laughs> you're you're opting from from the very simple. I've authored an upgrade code. To I'm now in this huge, twisted maze of of relationships based on these IDs. Um, yeah. If it's that big, I mean, they aren't usually that big. Well, yeah. Until you start trying to do something interesting like this person. I, I'm still not certain where they're at. Uh, so again, the A and B upgrading C, I, I, I get I get to want to have more direct directedness, uh, direct. I understand what I have more directed. That's just missing in burn. Like that, that is a reasonable idea to say, yeah, I like, I want related bundles, but more directed so I can not have uh, cross relationships across things. Okay, fine. That makes sense to me. And yes, it's, that's a weakness in the first version of burn. Absolutely. As is the weakness that only higher versions can upgrade. That's another weakness in the first version of burn. Right, right, right. Simplifications, things that were done simply and so to say hey the the feature one way to do this feature i haven't thought through all of the different implications but one way that comes to mind in the feature is to say that you can the upgrade relationship is very directed probably could do the same thing for add-on the add-on relationship is very directed such that two add-ons with the same the two add-ons with the same relate to the uh, Two add-ons to the same related bundle ID do not detect each other. We could say that. And I'm actually curious now to what extent they do. Do they detect each other as add-ons to each other? No, I hope I, not. <laughs> that, I hope not. I mean, that just that wouldn't work. Right? Yeah, I, I hope not. No. So uh, I'm... Yeah. So I, I mean, yeah, this is a certainly could be more directive in the relationships. Absolutely. Even, I guess, in detection, I don't know, in detection, you're just going to say, tell me everybody. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. You have to draw the graph and kind of work way down to like, all right, cool. Um, what is the new or what is the advanced, more advanced behavior from this? I wish there was more to this to really understand what they were doing. Because I'm kind of guessing that yeah. A and B were upgrading C, but I would have liked to know, was C going to continue to live? 
were A and B, what were A and B? Were they just different types of suites? You know, like, I just wish there was right. more here, but uh, unfortunately this is ancient, so we're not going to get that. So we're just kind of guessing at all the different ways that they could do this. Oh, sorry, Zach. Zach, have we answered your question? Like, you asked a really good question, and the answer is uh, both, unfortunately. I think that right. might be part of the confusion is that a related bundle can actually do both, and becoming a little bit more specific about how it's being used would probably be a good thing. Well, that's interesting buzzing. Am I the only one that hears that? Let me see. I'm going to mute myself. Nope, still there. So it's one of you guys, I think, have some sort of background buzzing. Yeah, I oh. guess my heater's on. Oh, okay. There we go. Know. All right. <laughs> it was Sean. All right, good. Very good. At least we figured out what it was. Uh, I'm all paranoid about the sound <laughs> all the time, especially today. Um, so, yeah. Is this something to tackle in four? Like, no. Well, the, the reason this came up is because I'm going to implement bundle package. Bundle package. So I was trying to, f so we're going to have to create BA, BA events where we're saying, here's, we detect the bundle, but we also need to detect its upgrade bundle relationship bundles so that you can know whether it's obsolete or not. Just like we do with MSI. Sorry, I missed that. Sorry. So um, wait, wait. What is bundle package? Bundle. Pa oh, oh, wait. No. What is bundle pa package with bundle detection? Oh, in the got it in the language. Bundle. Got it. Chain package. Bundle. Got it. Sorry. Okay. All right. I'm caught up. So we need to get the same information we give for MSIs, where we're telling them whether it's a major upgrade, it's a downgrade, maybe a minor upgrade. We need to be able to give that information to the BA. So I was trying to figure out how this actually is supposed to work because this was behavior was surprising to me. And now that I know that's intentional, makes it weird. <laughs> I wouldn't like it if I was writing a bundle, but I guess that's what we need to give your feature where you can block bundle C from being installed in the future. Then that's that was the one that was missing from MSI that everybody wanted. And so that's was one of the features in the bundle in the related bundles. The other one was that it was simple and I would argue that it's possibly over simple. And Zach's comment here about it, uh, the two cases, should be declared differently somehow is is a good point. Like maybe it was all oversimplified on all that, but um, I still think that's a a good scenario to keep. That if something is upgraded, that it does not have to know about the future in order to detect that it would be um, downgrading things. So if bundles are not supposed to detect each other like MSIs detect each other, then. I'm going to have to sit down and think about what, how to actually tell the PA about what's being detected. Oh, yeah. But Bundles have a lot less control than MSIs do on the version of language already. So that's one but, big but difference. But Bundles already, I mean, Bundles already have uh, related bundle behavior. Sorry. This is nothing new for Bundles. Right, they already detect related bundles of type downgrade to yeah. themselves. Right. So, yeah, maybe what you're saying is it's going to have to use the same exact logic and say this is a related bundle to this bundle, and then it's going to have to give all the same events for every single bundle in the chain. I, I, yes, and. I would expect that it would be the same sequence that you see today in the log when it detects bundles related to itself. But this kind of goes back to what I did earlier where I pulled out the related operation information on the related bundle because you can't really detect what the related operation is supposed to be at detect time. 
because it's all depends like it it depends on a lot of other things uh that's too vague for me to respond to <laughs> the, the when you detect a related msi package there's a related operation that says downgrade major upgrade yep minor upgrade and we're not going to be able to get that information for related bundles. Um, why not? It's all version compares, right? Well, what information are well, we missing? Bun for the bundles, we're taking into account the overall action to decide what the operation is supposed to be. Oh, right, right. Okay, sorry, sorry. I remember that. Yes. Yes, I remember that. But that's, um, yes, they're, but like with MSI packages, they're just potential upgrades at the time of detect, right? It's only when you plan and you have an action that you can decide what kind of upgrade they are. Upgrade slash downgrade. Well, I mean, that would be the, that would be the same for bundles, right? Well, the thing is, for MSIs, it can use MSI's logic and decide what it's supposed to, what MSI would do. But for bundles, I guess it's all up to the debate to the BA what that actually means. Just because they're upgrade related doesn't make it necessarily a downgrade or an upgrade. No, but like we, but like we do today, we make those decisions <clears throat> based on what we know, including the version number and the action during planning. The B, the BA of the related bundle can always say, <laughs> I don't think so, and you know, not do what was requested. But, but that's at apply time. But so like when you have a bundle in your chain and you think it's an upgrade, but then you try to run the related bundle and it thinks a downgrade, because the BA decides it's a downgrade, and now your chain is gonna fail because uh, it's I, gonna get the error. We're not gonna be able to declaratively know what a BA dis decides programmatically. Yeah. But if we had better defined things about what these, all these codes mean. Then we would still be dependent on the BA making a decision. <laughs> True. But you would make better decisions most of the time. <laughs> I, I think we'll know. I mean, you know what the decisions are now. You, you can calculate all this from the parent bundle. This is going to work. This is a 9x percent solution. Yeah. Right, because nine X is one upgrade code involved in the mess. Um, I agree. We have to, <laughs> at the very least, document what's supposed to happen, and then decide, you know, what would make more sense. And I think we will decide that something makes more sense than what we have today. Yeah, that that version one wasn't good enough, and that version two has value. I, I think the text is being expansive. And that's messing with the simplicity of the of the action, that w the the three actions that we support. Okay. I don't think that's the fundamental flaw, but yeah, I think the bigger problem is that the A and B are detecting each other through the upgrade code. But yeah. Well, that that's where. Okay, fair. Detection is expansive. I like that it's expansive. Uh, but I could be convinced that it's better that it's not as expansive, it's more directed, and then the sim simple operations, simple actions that we support today would just work better. Also, the fact that all of this stuff is in the registry and we have butyl means the engine doesn't have to do everything. Detection is easy, as long as you know there's a a wrapper that hides the implementation details. Detection is easy, 
or at least straightforward. So, yeah, it'd be easy to, to trim what the engine detects as long as we can you know, provide an API that lets you get deeper. But I, I will assert that it starts with documenting what we have. So it sounds like this is V next. I don't think we can fix it in 4.0. Oh, I mean, we could if we wanted, but it, I mean, well, we would need to jump on it pretty sorry. quick. Yeah. I, I, I think it's a, it's a pretty big change that, um, I, <laughs> I think just documenting it is going to take some effort. Yeah. I'd be willing to take that part on, but not, <laughs> yeah, I'm hesitant to take on more than I have already as it is. Um, interestingly, well, I, mean, I I could not do that that research in you know a four hour time frame. Yeah. Um, interestingly, this was open in 2013, 2013 and hasn't been a big questions. So. I, I feel like a lot of the upgrade logic, the simple upgrade logic is what most people are just using. Which is well, I feel like the case. And people I feel probably like don't people even know are, about the add-on stuff. Yeah, I feel like people are using it if they have simple upgrade logic and they're not even using it if, if they don't because it doesn't work for them. Well, or it does, and they're just using detect-only related bundle. Yeah authoring to exactly. do everything they need to do in a BA, which truthfully is going to be, you know, call it 50, 50. If you have something more complicated than, you know, than a, a straight line of, of, of upgrades, you're probably going to need more than, you know, what you're going to have business logic that determines what upgrades, what not something you can, you know, easily declare. Yeah. It yeah, patch bundles and add-on bundles aren't that hard to do either, but yeah. Well, I'm thinking more like upgrades. Upgrades frequently revolve around marketing. Add-ons and patch bundles less so. Right, that's fair. So not 3X. We're looking at Bnext and carrying on. Do we need to look at the other one related to this, to the previous one? No. Okay. That was, that was bundle package, right? Got it. Uh, bundle package, yes. Handle detect condition. Well, it's more complicated than that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that whoever opened that bug was just... Oh, Bob from Ancient History. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it's much more complicated than a simple paragraph will describe. Yes, no doubt about that. All right. Uh, what? Two factor? How? What am I? <laughs> Here I am. All right. Back to the issues. Okay. Bring back option to verify payload authenticated signature. I'm actually working on this right now. And after just going around and around and around and around and around on this, I've just become more convinced that the, the scenario that makes sense is uh, to just expose this through remote payloads um, and handle all the, the things down here talking about. Uh, don't uh, specify a hash if a certificate is specified. That's somewhere down here. Um, where is it? Anyway, all this. So I'm working on bringing all this into the remote payload scenarios only, both on XEs and on the MSUs. And dealing with additional payloads is something that I'm working on right now. I don't have the solution for that, but it is kind of the... All right, so you had this XE and all of its other supporting files. How do we get all that stuff laid out together? I'm trying to solve that as well, which is, I think, all the three things, things that were called out, or four things that were called out here in the most recent updates to this, is that, yes, it will be for only remote only. It will handle this hash versus not problem, so you don't bypass the signature check by specifying hash. It will be for XEs and MSUs. It will be remote only, and it will. I'm working on the solution to handle the case when there are more than one file to go along with the remote payload. So that's what I'm working on right now, which means we won't do it for MSIs, MSPs. What am I missing? I think those are the only two other things in the chain, right? Yeah. 
So those things. But if you, I mean, if you add support for remote payload for other payloads, then that should be straightforward. Right. I oh, mean, like loose payloads for an XE? Which is what someone asked for anyway, and should be pretty easy after all the refactoring I did for the remote payload stuff. Yeah, so I'm working my way through all that right now. That's what I'm working on right now. So I think we can take this off triage and just leave it on my list of things to solve. It will be remote only. Maybe Although update this title. You so. are racing Microsoft to where if Microsoft updates the package before you get this in, then our tests will start, start failing. Yeah, well, that was always true. <laughs> it's always been true. Um, but this is for V4, so we haven't changed anything. Well, I mean, I'd r rather the CI builds not start failing. <laughs> Wait, we have CI tests that are installing the .NET framework? They're doing layout, and one of the payloads in the layout is the NetFX 4.8. Okay. Then, then, yeah, then that will start failing should they update it. So hopefully they don't do that before this gets done. But I'm working on it. I'm so, actually kind of surprised because that's... I thought they updated it basically monthly every time there was a you know, Patch Tuesday release. But they haven't changed the... Oh, no, they have. No, I don't know. 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 Anyway, uh, that's where we're going. So I just need to change that to verify remote payload by authentic code signature. So I will... If you don't get that, Bob, I will definitely get that. The Bring, title? Yep, the title. Bring back option to verify remote payload by authentic code signature. Except there's no remote remote payload anymore. It's the thing that we call it. I don't have another name for it. Ex <laughs> can't call it external. Da, 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 da. So it's, it's, it's remote payload for us. We know what it means and other people have to catch up to what it means. All right, let's see. Going back, let's see what else is going on. Uh, GitHub action status. So beginning of the month, uh, our build started getting canceled outright. Uh, it always seemed to be local to us. Other people didn't seem to be having this problem. Um, and then last Thursday, not December 14th, is that right? No, December 17th. I don't know why I wrote 14th down. December 17th, 14th is, oh geez. Anyway, December 17th um, is when it seemed to just suddenly start working. Now, I did go and push the ARM binaries, the ARM binaries, the ARM library files into the image that GitHub uses because they had it in 2019 and it was missing from 2020. So they took that change and they were going to roll it out. That image did, should not have been out by December 17th, not December 14th, Thursday, December 17th. And so it's still a little bit of mystery why on Thursday, December 17th, things started passing for us. And it wasn't I until think you got lucky Sunday. Because my builds were still failing on my February. Rebuild. Do I keep saying December? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the slide. We're like 10 months in the future. Oh, <laughs> but I think you were lucky because I had builds failing through the weekend. What? But I had several builds pass. Like it was just all, everything I was running was working. I do not understand this. This just does not make sense to me. Um, so it's unclear, as is, as is stated here, unclear what resolved the issue. Um, and I'm still on the GitHub ticket. They're unfortunately becoming a little less interested. It's like, oh, look, the new image rolled out. Did that seem to fix you? It seems like it's fixed you. It looks like everything's working. And uh, we're, we're happy to make this ticket go away. We really don't want to dig into it. So I don't know how much farther there I can really get them to dig into it because, well, it does seem to be working. Um, and we'll see what happens from here. It may just forever remain a mystery that we don't get to the root of. And I don't know. I kind of hope they'd be like, oh, we really want to understand what's wrong in our infrastructure, but they're not really taking that approach to the problem. So um, we'll see. Uh, I, I don't know that I'll have another update other than things seem to be back to normal and working. So that's a positive. That's all I really have there. Because mysteriously fixed things never break again. 
yeah, I, I am going to hold on to this ticket. So if things come back, I can definitely come back and go, well, we were looking at this before. Look, you guys resolved it as, I don't know, seems to work now. And now it doesn't work again. So go back and pick up the same, uh, hopefully, severity as this last ticket had. So we'll see. Um, but I do have a hard time pushing on I'm saying, well, keep looking at this, even though the repro isn't happening anymore. So it's like, uh, I don't know. All right. So that's the state of that. Other things people want to talk about. Questions, comments, things going on out there. Um, what's going on? Stuff that needs to be covered. Don't know. Working on the authentic code signature, then working my way to the the exe detect conditions. Those are the two next two things on my list. Just trying to get those checked off. Um, yesterday, if you're on the stream, we worked our way through incremental build, which was very exciting to have that working for Wix libs, MSMs, and MSIs. Very, very exciting. That was several weeks of, you know, hour and a half after each week, and it finally worked. So it's like, yay, that felt good. All right, I'm filling time. I'm not sure Zach has much else for us since he seems to be the one active in the chat. Uh, two weeks from now is sometime in March, not in January or whatever it would have been if I was operating on my December 14th time frames. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So I think it says March 10th. I think that's normal. Um, I don't think there's anything. Yeah, March 10th is just another day in the world. Um, see you guys then. I think that's the time. Good, good, good. All right. Two weeks from now, same place, same time, different day. We'll do this again. And that's all I got. You guys have a good one. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.